Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight we are going to be checking in this game and the answer we're going to be the answer we're going to be questioning. The question we're going to be answering is what's in the box in regards to Guildmaster. From what I understand, this is a heavier game from Good Games Publishing, one of the heaviest they publish, more of a Euro than their other games, with a fantasy theme. You are the master of a new adventuring guild, competing with rival guilds for fame as increasingly dangerous events threaten the city. Combine your adventurer skills and abilities to complete contracts, recruit adventurers, and upgrade your guild. Players each secretly assemble and order their teams at the same time. Predict your rival's likely moves as you sequence your orders to get what you need most. Will your planning pay off? Will you negotiate and cooperate with your rivals? Or will you overpower and outbid them to become the ultimate guild master? So it sounds like here is some social deduction a bit here and um, some programmed movement. Two things. One I love and one we'll see. Predicting your opponents is good. If there's actual social deduction, I don't know. As long as there's no traitor, I should be all right. So you're going to recruit adventurers, complete contracts, hire builders, scheme, build, and adventure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack the shrink on this. We're going to throw it down on the table and take a look at what you get in the box. Alrighty, so here we have the box for Guildmaster from Good Games Publishing. We're going to crack open. I have not seen what's in here. I know nothing about the gameplay. Except I dig fantasy themes. I'm a D&D &D fan. I like fantasy RPGs. And this has some cool RPG elements. Alright, we have a rule book that's as big as the box. Oh, here's a bonus. We have a separate quick start guide. Which feels almost as thick. Some really nice artwork on here. I dig it. It really pops. It's a slightly cartoony style, but I like it. So I'm going to flip through this Gets quick start guide first. Uh, it's almost too big to fit on the screen here. We have... A whole bunch of different guilds here. We've got a game overview, how to set it up. There's a list of uh, initial skills here, so it looks like there's going to be some leveling up involved. There is definitely a long um, horizontal board we'll be pulling out at some point. Plot phase. We have two column rule book here with a ridiculous number of examples. There is probably 50% art on these pages. No, not quite. Probably about um, 40, 30%, 33 to 40% art on these pages. Showing actual shots, showing where coins are moving, where things are going. Uh, looks like there's some worker placement elements here. All right, the quick start guide on its own is 10 pages. So 10 pages just to learn how to play. Then there is a strategy section here. And then we have the full rule book. So going through this, we do have a setup. It looks like there's going to be some hidden information here, which makes sense if you're doing some programming and the other opponents don't see what you're doing. Uh, looks like you might even have, is that the same board? Yeah, okay, it's the same board. Again, uh, we're looking at, again, 40 to 50% artwork here showing examples, showing actual game components. Really impressive looking rule book. I obviously haven't read it myself. It's my first time seeing it. I'm impressed with what I've seen here. All kinds of stuff moving around on the boards. You got orders described in depth. Um, we got summary. We've got call outs here. That's always good to see. Pointing out specific elements. I notice as we get further in the book, you get less and less art. Uh, now we're looking at things to remember in a glossary. So the full rules are 21 pages, and this is not a small book. This is two columns, small text. Uh, this is going to be a chunky one. This is going to take some work to learn. Uh, and two whole pages glossary of terms. And then on the back, you have a dice, showing you the dice probabilities. That's a nice touch. So there is dice used in this game. They actually provide a probability chart on the back of the rule book. I know some people are going to appreciate that. Okay, that is one of the coolest components I've ever seen. There are ribbons in here for each of the different guilds. So there's like guild pennants that are actual ribbons. So I have a gold ribbon here with a piece of heraldry on it that looks like a fox head wearing armor. So we have an, an orange pennant. Then we have a red pennant with a phoenix at the bottom of it. But these are actual cloth like bookmarks. Then we have a green pennant with Medusa's head. And a blue with a mermaid or fish. No, that's definitely a mermaid. There's, there's hair there, which unfortunately I can't really show off on my close-up camera. Those are nice. I don't know what they're for, but... 
if they have an actual thing where you bookmark things, that'd be really cool if you throw it in a book. So then we do have the board, um, which is going to be a very large, long board that I can't actually quite fit in my camera lengthwise. So I'm just going to hold it this way, kind of pan it so you can kind of see it. There are all kinds of coin values on here. Um, I see a spot for adepts. There's spots for cards. There's costs next to the cards. Things are listed off A, B, C, D, E, F. So there's probably an order of priority here with a scoring track. It looks like the game's going to play through nine rounds. I do see differences here for two or three to four players. Nice looking board. It shows the inside of an inn with spots to put all the cards on it. And then on this side, there's some notes. Um, again, three to four spots with spots for four different stacks of cards. These are contracts that are probably going to be up you're going to choose from. It is a single-sided board. Then we have individual player boards. These are much thinner. They're not mounted. They're card, but they are thick card. Uh, so there's a spot for order one, order two, order three, order four. So again, this looks like it's going to be a program movement card, uh, movement game. And there's one of these for each faction. Digging through that. So all of this is sitting in... Um, a very basic trough style cardboard insert, which it looks like at some point you're going to add a divider to. Uh, so you have a guild upgrade board, which is also thin card. And there was one of those for each one. So this is stables, mess hall, bar. Uh, they're the same. Yeah, they're the same for the three fact or four factions, but with the different faction symbols and colors. Then we have the um, screens for hiding. And they are actually all unique cards. So like the Medusa one looks uh, green and evil. And you have this nice large tavern, medieval tavern look. And on the back is what basically results in a DM screen for the game here. Showing off all of the icons, a round summary and how to play, and all the possible guild upgrades. This is a nice component right here. Like I always like seeing a good rule reference. This is a nice way to do it. So this is all on the inside of the screen. Showing, again, the guild upgrades, a how-to-play section, uh, the rounds listed off, and all the icons in the game. On the back of, like, a, a, this thing's huge. Like, it's two and a half feet across here. It's, it's a significant, like, this could be a DM screen, how big it is. And there is, of course, one of those for each guild. And, again, totally unique look. So I'm just going to show out the fronts of these so you can kind of see them. So that's the orange guild. The mermaid guild is blue. And again, completely different looking in for each of the players. Um, the Phoenix is a very pink color with lots of almost an Asian theme to it. So good. I, I, I am impressed again. that they, The Good Games Publishing, again, no punch boards. We already have everything punched out and in baggies already. Now it's all kind of tossed loose in the two baggies. But I'm really impressed by finding the components pre-cut like this. And they're super thick card. So we're going to put those aside and look at what else we got in the box. So there are a bunch of dice. We have standard six-sided dice, a bunch of them in red, blue, and black. They're tiny dice. Um, I'm going to guess like one centimeter dice. I will grab one of each of these to show up on the close-up cam. Of course, you can't see the blue very well. Um, these are rounded corners, standard pipped D6 dice. And there is a baggie full of them. Then we have a couple decks of cards, which I will open, and a deck of hobbit size cards, so smaller one-half size cards. There is one additional baggie, and then there is a piece, oh, here we go, a couple, so one small baggie and two large baggies, and then there is a piece here to build more of a box insert, oh, one more large baggie, but all it's doing is adding like one compartment to this entire trough, which just doesn't seem like much. So right, I could add one compartment here to my box insert to give it one spot. I don't know what I'd want to separate unless there's some in-game reason. There we go. I have now improved my box insert by putting a divider in the middle of my cardboard. That seems silly to me. But what it's going to let me do is toss these tokens in there as I go through them. Because I am not going to try to slide these back into the bag. So we have large like borders. This one says Sun Temple. For each completed character set, get something. I have to assume that these are going to go somewhere on your player boards. Um, they are two-sided. It describes the Sun Temple on the other side. So there's the Sun Temple, the Architect's Lodge, which is uh, green, 
These look like they're probably end game scoring now that I see more of them. Moon Temple for each completed contract get something. So there are three of those in one of these baggies. And then there's another baggie, which has more. And we also have the Vault, which shows uh, get victory points for every 20. And again, described on the back. I do like that it's on the back so you don't have to look up anything in the rule book. The Training Grounds and the Great Hall. And we're going to toss those in here. So next we have upgrades. We saw these. So here's the bar two. Shows you get four income per round. Okay. We are going to move all of this and dump this. So we have more upgrades. Stables 3, Bar 2, um, they have different things on the back. So the stable show horses, the bar shows like a tankard. We have the Hall 3, the Bar 3, and so on. There are a bunch of those. Despite the fact that there was nothing to punch, they oddly included blank stuff, like as if when you were punching it, you have stuff left over. So I guess if you lose a, a, a piece, you can replace it. Then there are a bunch of smaller tokens that have, again, a tower, a different tower, armory, theater. You know what? I'm just going to toss these down here, and you can kind of see them as I pull them out. Sanctum. It looks like these modify the dice rolls. So showing, like, re-roll dice or flip them to another side. Uh, these are all two-sided, but it's the same thing on each side. No, they are different on each side. So, like, the library shows two times re-roll or turn one die to a five. And I don't know when you buy that if you get the pick. So there's a pile of those. Uh, we have one more upgrade here. Then we have some um, scoring tokens if you get over 100 points. Then I have no idea. Hexagons with a stop sign, like a hand up, like stop. And on the other side, a closed fist. So that looks like a vote, possibly. An open-handed vote and a closed vote. So maybe there's a voting mechanism here. Uh, we have money. Uh, to coin tokens, they are two-sided, and it's kind of well done. They're each unique, so the ones are one small coin and show one coin. The two are two overlapping coins, so the shape of it is kind of like a, a snowman or a figure eight. And then there are fives, which is just like a more bulbous mass, but it is physically larger. So the two is larger than the one, and the five is larger than both of those, which is a nice touch. And then the 20s are gold bars that are rectangular. So that's another one for um, Good Games Publishing. I'm impressed with what they do with their money in their games. So this is a great thing for people with visual impairments where they can actually feel and feel the money feeling different in their hands. It's a nice touch. So that's it for the first baggie of components, which again, I'm just going to toss this in loose, which I'm going to hate myself later when I go to play. So then this other baggie seems like it's more of the same stuff. And it is. So I have more stable twos, hall twos. Mess Hall 2s. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm not ruining anything by mixing these. So we have a bunch more upgrades. And then we have a bunch more of the small things. So we have libraries, towers, sanctums, and so on. And at this point, I think we'll have my editor jump ahead because basically we've seen these 100-point tokens for the other two player colors. Another two of those, what we think are voting tokens. And the only thing I see different here is something that shows a token that says cost on it and shows crossed hammers. I have no clue. And a, like, moon, which I assume is probably for tracking phases, a moon token. And it's either a full moon or a waxing moon. And then a whole bunch more money and upgrade tokens. All right, that's all going in the box. Again, I'm going to hate myself later when I go to actually learn to play this. And I'm like, oh, my God, all the tokens are in loose. What did you do? All right, let's move on to the cards. We're going to start with the small cards. All right, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, and that's it. So A, A through F, um, that's what they show on the back. And then on the other side, oh, they're all the same coat. So these are probably, again, uh, for planning your movements or something. So A through F with the orange um, fox kind of symbol. Then... All right, so it's the same thing for all of them. So A through F, and then 1 through 6. And there's some limits on these. So A through F, 1 through 6 for each faction. Uh, not knowing the game, I have no idea what these do. 
They do have uh, coins at the top of the A through F. The other ones are more like a wax seal. So we have those for each faction here. Same deal for the mermaid faction, A through F. Um, and then we also have hammers, which is the same thing. One for each of those factions. So A through F, one through six, and a hammer for every single of the four factions. That's what the hobbit size cards are. And these, because I don't want them to get damaged, I'm going to throw into a plastic baggie here to try to protect them a little bit. As I crack open the next deck. So we are going to start off with legend cards. Then we have hero cards, adept cards, and novice cards in this first deck. So we'll start with the novices. We have a bunch of people we can hire they all have names and artwork and a few stats on them. So we have Gilthor here. Nice fantasy artwork. Looks like there's some nice diversity in this artwork too, which is a nice touch. Fang, Wallen. We see different body types too. Nice to see. Males and females. Embla, Nairi. So a whole bunch of characters here. Different nationalities. I'm impressed with his artwork. Uh, each of these, it looks like, has a potential of having six different stats and each has two of them. Yeah, each of these has two of the six stats. Lots of variety in this artwork. Really impressed. Nice looking cards. Uh, they all have rank zero in the corner because they're novice. Adepts are more red. We have Khan and EG and Sixie and Knockhill. So these are all different characters. They have special abilities at the bottom, but also only have two of the three stats. Whole bunch of them. There is a pile of these cards. Really nice artwork. Really impressed by the look of this. Love all the different looks these people have. Cool. Next we have heroes, and I assume we're just going to get more of the same. Uh, these also still only have two stats, but I notice the numbers are higher. They seem to be worth more points. Real mix of artwork here. Man, they must have spent a fortune on having each of these characters with a different, completely different look, completely different name. Uh, some of these, actually, once we're into heroes, have three different of the stats. They also have different symbols at the bottom and special abilities. Then we get to the legends. Uh, again, numbers are higher. They're worth more points in the corner. A whole bunch of legends, a whole bunch more characters. Really nice artwork. Really impressed by that stack of cards. All right, I am starting to think that this spot is for the cards. Yeah, I'm starting to think that. So we're going to pull these tokens out of here. And we're going to put the cards there. Last deck of cards. Alright, our final stack of cards looks like they are all horizontal. Uh, they are also, they also say legendary, heroic, so it seems to be the same categories. These are uh, all show like a, a wax seal on the back of them. Say each skill check targets 13 to 20. That says, so these are going to be like quest things to do. And they're at different difficulties. So each, each deck is going to range and there's common. So we have common, heroic, and legendary. I have to assume these are deeds or quests. We're going to link through some of the common ones. Uh, no word on these. So these are a little, little dry. So it just shows three of those six stats. Some numbers on them, which I assume are targets, and then a bonus probably for completing it. Um, identifying rebels, ambush poachers, escort merchant convoy. There is a bit of flavor text on the bottom of these, but these are about as abstract as you get. Even Lords of Waterdeep features more artwork than this. Uh, so a whole bunch of quests to complete, and I'm assuming the rewards are in the top corner. I am not going to go through all of these because they're boring and there's not much to see. So that's the common deck. We're going to grab the heroic deck, and we see more of the same except they're blue. Um, so we have build a camp, decipher arcane text, decrypt messages, acquire damning evidence, disperse the purple mist, and so on. There is, again, a stack of these. And a quick look at the legendary. We have more of the same. So we have the name of it, the, the requirement to complete it, and then what you get at the bottom, the boon or bonus for having it. Defend usurper, produce a miracle for the people, silence the dread baron, Execute the Undying Champion. I do have to say the legendary ones sound more legendary. Expose the Crimson Marshal, and so on. And that is it. That is all we get in the box with Guildmaster. 
we're going to put all this back in here. I did not see anything in particular that did anything cool with these, but it'll be interesting to read the rules to see if we do anything with these ribbons. That was the neatest component I've seen in a game in a long time. That's a really cool touch. All right, this looks like it's not fitting well, but it's just because I didn't take the time to actually flatten everything down nice. Everything should fit back in the box fine. It's just I poured the tokens in haphazardly. Alrighty, so there you go. That is everything you get in a copy of Guildmaster. It's ages 14 plus, two to four players. Game time, an hour to two hours. This is a really neat looking game from Good Games Publishing. Fantasy theme. You are a guild of adventurers trying to complete quests. Uh, fantasy D&D style theme, right? Dungeon Dragon style theme. Definitely dice driven with some dice mitigation in there. Fantastic artwork. Love the diversity on the artwork both in um, in every way, uh, gender, color, age, all of that. Really nice to see in, uh, in a game nowadays. Really looking forward to checking this out. Uh, looks fantastic. Now that you've seen what's in the box, if you played this, I would love to hear what you think. All right, thanks for watching. I am Mo Tuzan of the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the web as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, on pretty much all the social medias. Uh, you can also find me on our website, tabletopbellhop.com, where you can find all kinds of gaming content. Uh, there's short, quick links to those up here for those of you who are on YouTube. And also make sure you subscribe and pound that subscribe button, hit that notification button, ding that bell, however you want to say it. Do all those fun things and make content creators like myself happy to see. If you do have any comments, please leave them below. Finally, head over to patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop and consider tipping the bellhop so we can continue to make videos like this and continue to improve on our quality every time. Thank you for your time for Tabletop Bellhop. I'm Mo. Good night and game on.